five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Once a week, at least, to talk to a guy we just really love to talk to. Listen to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, we always love talking to Larry Bubbles Brown. That's the only way I can introduce you. I know no other way of doing that, you know? I know. I'll never shake bubbles. You'll never shake bubbles. Never shake bubbles. How you doing, Bubs? Good. I was traveling, so it takes uh, three days to recover, as Dana Carvey told me, and he's right. Yeah. Where, where were you traveling to? I was in Chicago on Saturday, with, uh, and I noticed that Chicago is much cleaner than San Francisco. This is, <laughs> I was talking to somebody else that doesn't live here. He's from Ireland, actually, and he said this. San Francisco, he said it's embarrassing. It's so dirty now. It's a, is it really that dirty now? It's, he said He said it's the worst he's ever seen. This guy that travels all over the world. Yeah, he said it's like a third world country. It like, used to be one of the cleanest towns around. It did, yeah. Wow. Very depressing. So. Yeah, I'm surprised it's a, it's a pigsty. How, why, why has it gotten so dirty? Uh, mostly the homeless problem. How bad is that homeless problem in San Francisco? Uh, you can step on needles, uh, human crap. It's not good. They have they have maps though. <laughs> Actually, have maps of the feces all over <laughs> to where to avoid. So. No, wh- well, why doesn't the city do something about that? That's it. No, everyone's just kind of wringing their hands. No one will do anything. And I hear, I hear it's like that in L.A. too. But. But I mean, that should not be difficult to deal with. I mean, you should you be able to come. So. You would seem to be able to come up with plans that would mitigate the situation and give these homeless a, a place and drug programs and things like that. It just looks like the city isn't willing to spend the money. They're not spending the money, or they won't. I don't. If they don't have the money, I don't know. But they. I mean, LA's got a big. There's so many rats in LA now. They're just having a huge typhus outbreak. And, well, you had all that uh, the the, uh, the tech scum move in, right? And you would think that that would force them, right, to do something mm-hmm. about it. In other words, oh hey, here are all these people with uh, making million dollar paychecks and things like that. We need to clean this city up. But apparently, there's no move to do it. No, you say just a lot of hand wringing, huh? Yeah, that's all they're doing, so it's uh, kind of depressing. But like yeah. you said, it was, when I first moved here, the, the whole West Coast was very clean. Now, I always would think of Chicago at this point as being filthy. Yeah, well, I'm walking around Chicago. My God, this place is uh, shining. So, Wow. It was shocking, yeah. So what were you doing in Chicago? I was working with Felipe Esparza at the uh, Vic Theater, which I, apparently is five million years old, but it was kind of cool. Yeah, what kind of an audience does he draw Mostly uh, uh, Hispanic, but uh, it was uh, there were a lot of white people in Chicago, so it was more mixed than he usually gets there. I thought. Yeah, but he, he uses you a lot as an opening act, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're the whitest guy I know. Yes, I'm the Anglo. So, so, so does he figure that? <laughs> then that... I came uh, came back uh, Sunday, and I had to run up and do that little movie part that I, the Durst did, has a big part in. Yeah, yeah. And how did that go? That was kind of fun. Uh, you know, you just do the same thing over and over again. It's a little tiring, but uh, really good people. Yeah. And I was I was watching, I think you know, uh, I was watching some TV show there at late at night about, they were interviewing Robert Downey, and uh, yeah. I think you've got some connection to him. I, I uh, let me put it this way, I, I had uh, breakfast with Robert Downey years ago uh, with his father, and he was like seven years old. <laughs> his uh, father's a filmmaker, right? Yeah, I think I don't know if he's still alive or not. I think he may have died. 
Uh, but Robert Downey Sr. Was a, was a film director, did a couple of great films. Putney Swope uh, was the most significant of them. A film I've called, heard of that. A film called Pound, which was about a pound, an uh, animal pound, but the animals are played by human beings, and the puppy was played by Robert Downey Jr. That was his first movie role. <laughs> Uh, but uh, anyway, so I, I, I used to have breakfast with Bob, and he would bring his son with him, you know. And in true Hollywood tradition, I keep thinking, did I treat the kid right? You know, was I good to him? Was I nice to him? Uh, I hope I didn't offend him. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I, I, I knew him when he was just a mere pup, literally. Wow. Yeah, so... Well, he quoted, uh, he had a quote, I don't know who said it, but he said regarding movies, he said, everybody can act, a few people can direct, and nobody can write. <laughs> well, maybe in his case, maybe he's never run up against good writers, but I think, you know, you've got guys like Aaron Sorkin who are pretty formidable, you know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it was I, a good quote. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I heard some other quote by him, but I can't remember it now. It was something about fame, you know, uh, that it's absolutely elusive. You know, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, that you have fame today and you're dead tomorrow, so, you know, what the hell. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, we, we, talk about, we talk about big stars, okay? Now, there are stars here in the United States. We have a lot of stars here because we call everybody stars now. They're not necessarily, but we call them stars, you know. And uh, so we give them credence that way. But in the old days, you had real stars. I mean, people that were so big that their fame was worldwide, okay? Uh, and when you think, when I say to people, who do you think was the biggest star, uh, star in, the, what, the 30s, I think, or 40s? Um, they'll name a lot of different people. They'll say, you know, so, so, but sometimes they can't even say anybody because they don't know any actors from back then. The biggest star on the planet was Mickey Rooney. That's right, yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> it's astonishing, actually. You for know. two years. Huh? No, actually for five, I think. For five years. I think it was five years. Uh, the biggest star in the world. And you got to remember, there were a lot of other people at that time, and there were a lot of big actors and so on, but somehow he was the biggest star. Uh, so, I mean, look at how elusive fame is. I mean, when he died, what's he sitting there doing? Going, I used to be the biggest star in the world. You know, and everybody goes, who are you? Yeah. Well, that's what uh, when Dana Carvey did that crappy sitcom with Mickey Rooney, he said he's running around a set all the time. He said, hey, 1939, I was number one in the world. Did he, <laughs> he really? He, that was, over and over. he was doing that? Yeah, he was still doing that you know, in 1981. Yeah, 1939, by the way, was considered to be the greatest year in movies ever. The, uh, some of the... the I think I can name some of the films. All right, name a couple. I know you can name two of them right off. The Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Wizard of Oz. Right. Okay, and there's three more that I can't remember. I think you, Citizen. You I think Citizen Kane was in there. If I'm not mistaken, I, don't, I thought that was 41. Let me let me let me look this up here a second. I may be I may be wrong about that, uh, but uh, let's see. Was it the, Citizen was it Mr. Kane. Smith. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I can't remember all the other films, but they, if you start listing them, there are just a ton of them. 1941 was Citizen Kane, excuse me. Okay. Uh, but uh, 1939 produced supposedly the greatest uh, amount of, of, of important films in the history of movies. Although I would say 77 was probably a good year, too, because that was Star Wars and... Uh, couple other things that went on in 1977 that were pretty big but 39 is considered the apex of great filmmaking and uh we don't make great films anymore it's just no, you know we make bad. we make we make uh, what they call tent pole releases in which uh, you have a bunch of people um doing uh uh, these pictures that are supposed to appeal to a to a 10 year old right 
and then everybody mm. goes to see them, and they say, oh, we made a quadrillion dollars over the weekend. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's just it, it, the, it, the day of that kind of movie making is gone. Where that's all gone is to Netflix, Amazon, and, uh, Amazon, um, uh, Hulu, uh, where they're financing what we would call the old small independent films. Uh, and uh, winning Academy Awards with them too, we might add. I mean, um, yeah. last year uh, Netflix had the had the Academy Award winning best foreign picture in Roma. And uh, so, where where it's starting to happen is there. And people say, well, that's not the movie theaters. Well, you know, what are the movie theaters going to be? Pretty soon, I don't think you're going to see movie theaters. No, I don't either. They're going to just disappear. They're going to disappear unless they do something. Uh, the only thing they do now that makes people want to go see them is these big pictures with all kinds of explosions and, uh, you know, things like that, which uh, is, um, you know, somewhat uh, uh, is basically what the whole business has become. A small little film like the one you're making, <laughs> right, uh, mm-hmm. that will, it, it, they'll probably try to sell that to Netflix. You know, or something yeah, and like nobody will see it, but. and nobody will see it, right? You know, uh, so what was uh, what was your part in the film? I was I was the pest control guy, and I have I act, I I haven't read the script, so I have no idea what the film's about. But um, I, I can you remember your up, lines? Little comic relief. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, I have a. Uh, a thing with Will where I, I said, God hates tolerance. That's a good one. Yeah. And Will says, God doesn't hate. And I said, where do you think wrath comes from, you moron? And that was it. Yeah. And that was your part? That, no, well, there's, there's like, there was two other scenes, but I can't remember the line. Yeah. I'm yeah. just kind of this obnoxious guy. Oh, so you actually had a scene with Will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Now, did you have uh, this? Is a small independent. Production. Will Will's been up there like for two weeks. So he's been know, doing some heavy lifting. I know. I couldn't do an interview with him a couple of weeks ago because mm-hmm. of the of the movie. Uh, does he have a trailer? No trailer. No tra- <laughs> it's low budget. Low budget. Okay. He's but they, a- they they did have a nice hotel for us. So. Yeah. And um, uh, did they? Have, I mean, did it look like it was a fairly big production in that they're not skimping on equipment and things like that. Right. Or? They're good equipment, and they had a crew that definitely knew what they were doing. So, uh, Yeah. So, and, of course, it was, it was Will, shot. Like I said, I don't know the story, but next time you talk to Will, I'm sure he'll have the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and it was shot, I guess, using video cameras. Uh, yeah. Because that's the way films are. Film, they, they, don't, they say, I'm going to see a film today. There's no film. Come on, Kodak's almost out of business. Mm-hmm. There's no Thank film. Thank God, because uh, <laughs> if, when you shoot film, if you make a mistake, it'll go back and start all over again. They say, "Oh, well, you mean uh, it's it's uh, it's it, and you mean tape, don't you?" No, no, it's not even tape. It, yeah. go, it goes onto a onto a, um, a, a, a solid state uh, thing uh, that uh, takes a signal and and holds it. And, and, and no, no more film, no more tape, none of that. No, and the uh, it's certainly say, the old days with film uh, to distribute a movie, they had to make so many copies of the movie, which I, I thought those cost like two thousand a reel. Oh, they cost the about two thousand a reel, and they were good for about a week, until they yeah. got all hacked up from being shown. If you lived in, let's say you lived in Fargo, North Dakota, okay, they would do what they call bicycle prints. They would, in other words, they would send prints from one place and then to another and then to another and then to another. And by the time you got to Fargo, when you saw the thing, the film was so hacked up. You know? <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Especially, you could always tell the first 10 seconds of every reel was really hacked up. You know, when you'd see the new reel go start, you would see lots of picture noise. And then it would start to clear up as it got more towards the center of the reel. And somewhere along the line, maybe in Oshkosh, uh, some projectionist didn't clean his projector properly, so for the whole reel, there's like a line going through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, there are people listening to us right now don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. Because it's not they, that long ago. Yeah. 
And so that's why uh, fil uh, film restoration has been difficult. There was this, um, there was this film I saw. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of it was because it, it, what it dealt with was that there was this, uh, the last place, it's like in Alaska, that these films wound up. And then rather than have the cost of sending them back, the movie company said, just keep them. So what they did at one point, the movie theater burned down, so a lot of those that were in the basement were destroyed. And then those that weren't destroyed, they just didn't know what to do with all these films, so they took them out to the tundra and buried them. Jeez, oh, wow. Well, they found them recently. And some of them are interesting, really fascinating. Preserve? So, they, they did it preserve well, them? <laughs> well, I mean, some of them went out and were frozen in the tundra, which preserved them to a certain extent. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, they weren't great copies of stuff, but this whole film was nothing made up of clips taken from that, that film, that, uh, that file. So the, it was the last place in the United, or the continental United States, I mean, Alaska wasn't in the United States at the time, that, uh, they, uh, that they peddled the, uh, the prints to. So that, that's what they did. They went from place to place to place to place. Now, they send them a hard drive. How much does that cost? You know, uh, n almost nothing. Uh, and it costs them almost nothing to produce them. Where before, they used to have to pay for film stock, and they used to have to pay for printing and developing and all of that. It was a fortune, yeah. No, no, you just copy, 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 copy. And some movie theaters, I don't know if this has been done yet, but I'm, I, because I haven't been keeping up the technology, but th th there are stories that they're work they were working on a system where satellites would deliver the pictures to the movie theaters. So you, would, uh, you wouldn't yeah. even have to have a projectionist there. The whole thing would just, just be automated. It would start at a certain time, and that'd be it, you know. Yeah, there was a guy out in Moraga that had a theater, and they, he was the, they were forcing him to change this update the screens and that was costing like 50,000 to do a screen so. well they, they, they when they first put in digital projection none of the theaters wanted it because they had to reinvest in all new equipment yeah but now they all have it all your theaters are digital um, the the problem with that is uh, they really can't stop the film <laughs> they have a hard time stopping the film if there's a problem with it or whatever you know, I've gone into theaters yelling and screaming down to the manager because I love 3D, okay? And I can tell when a picture's in 3D and not in 3D. And in one case, I went in and I started to see the picture and I went, this isn't in 3D. So I went down to the manager and I complained. I said, it's not in 3D. So he came up with me and he looked and he says, yeah, I guess it's not, but what do you expect us to do about it? I said, well, you, you charge $4 more for the 3D showing. You can give people their money back for starters. Oh, no, we can't do that. And meanwhile, while I'm arguing with this guy about whether there's 3D on the screen or not, there are people in the audience sitting there with their fucking glasses on thinking they're watching 3D. <laughs> Nobody else in the whole theater complained except the old fart. <laughs> You know, so, I mean, uh, uh, and then on another occasion, I was, was Black Panther, and uh, I, you couldn't see anything on the screen. All you saw were these little eyes of black people. You know, it was really dim. And so I went down to the manager, and I took him up, and I said, the picture's dim, and he stood there without the glasses on. So it looks kind of okay to me. I said, well, you've got the same picture right next door in the next theater. Uh, maybe an hour later, but it's the next theater. Let's go in there. And I took him in there, and he looked at the screen, and he said, oh, my God, yeah, there is a big difference between this theater and that theater. And I said, well, what are you going to do about it? He said, we can't do anything about it. The film's already started. What, you can't go up there and turn the thing that says more light? <laughs> That's good customer service. <laughs> and so as I said to people, I... Um, um, uh, I, I, you know, uh, I don't feel I ever saw Black Panther, you know. I I saw his eyes, but that was about it, you know. And I, I, that really kind of, I don't know about you, but that would really bother me, you know, really bothers yeah. me. Because to begin with, 
uh, I just paid between my wife and I $42 to see that picture. All right? That's for starters. We also bought the popcorn. That's another 15 We also took a cab there and back. So by the time we were through, we had an $80 investment in seeing Black Panther. And they should care more about their showmanship when people are going to spending that kind of money than they do. It's like they don't care. There's no sense of showmanship. They don't. American people will take anything. So they can throw the consumer's crap or they'll take it. You know, I am... Um, the other night, I watched a movie, which I've, it's never been a, a favorite of mine, uh, basically because I consider it a really kind of corny soap opera, but that's Gone with the Wind. And I hadn't seen it in a while. It was on TCM, and I, you know, I could go through it at, at, at certain speeds and so on. And I, uh, I started watching it, and I was amazed of the craft that was involved in making that film. I mean, that it was just, it is a great film as films go. Corny as it is, you know. I mean, the Yeah, I couldn't get into the story, but it is. An, uh, the first half is, is, uh, is, uh, uh, by, is historical, and the second half is pure, uh, you know, dime store novel, corny romance, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you now kind of picture, right? In other words, it almost is two different movies, if, if you will. And, um, uh, but I watched it, and I said, you know, I, this is a great movie. You know, they, they, would not, they could not make a movie like this today, because they don't know how to make a movie like this today. And uh, I was also amazed by the fact that it did hold up, you know, that it doesn't look antiquated, particularly. Uh, there was another film I saw that I was amazed held up with time, and I can't remember what it was now. But some films do hold up. I mean, The Wizard of Oz kind of holds up um, a against the kind of films we're doing today. Although I will watch a film like Gone with the Wind, and I will say if they made it today, everything would be digital. So the war scenes would be bigger and so on and so forth. But they'd all be digital, and you'd have that digital feel to it, which is... Mm -hmm a different feel than you got with the live uh, performances. But also in this film, you had some very good acting going on. Clark Gable was very good in that picture. Vivian Lee was incredible in that picture. Hattie McDaniel was incredible in that picture. Even Butterfly McQueen. I mean, there was some great acting going on in that film. So I, I was amazed at what a good film it was in the end. I, didn't, I, I wasn't... Um, I wasn't as disappointed as I thought I would be by it. I didn't watch the whole thing because I know it almost by heart. But I, I did put on the scene, for instance, which is the intermission break where she eats a beet and it tastes bad and she spits it out and she stands up with her hand, her fist to the sky and says, as God is my witness, I'll never be hungry again. And the music <laughs> swells and I, my tears are rolling down my really? eyes, you know. <laughs> and I'm going, why am I fucking crying? Uh, but I'll tell you, I know why I'm, why I'm crying. It's not her acting, which is very good. And it's not the photography, which was very incredible. It was the music. And one time I, when I was interviewing Marvin Hamlish, I said, why is it every time I go to see The Way We Were, which I consider a very corny movie, and you did the music for, do I suddenly in that last scene start bawling my eyes out? And he said, because I used... The special chords. I said, yeah? He said, there are chords I can write into music that will invoke a crying response from you. I went, jeez. Wow, that's Christ. amazing. You know, he said, yeah, there, there, there is a, a, a series of chords you can hit or whatever that will create that situation. Uh, wait a minute, why did my, why did my, uh, uh, my, my phone just started... Uh, uh, checking out everything I was saying, like Siri, uh, it was writing it all down. <laughs> anyway, so you know, I mean, um, well, there's uh, nothing more powerful to a, a movie. I think it's the music that makes a movie. It's unbelievable. If you didn't have that in the background, it, I uh, think most films would be very flat. Well, I mean, it, it, uh, most movies wouldn't work like they work. I mean, yeah, they wouldn't work at all. I mean, imagine if you stripped all the music out of, say, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Would it be as heroic? You know, 
Um, and um, uh, but it, you know, music is is singularly one of the most important parts in selling the movie to the audience or making it believable. So, yeah, even the the silent films. I think they had didn't they have live music at those? Uh, the, yeah, the, yeah, they had live music. They had live orchestras, like t- sometimes eighty piece orchestras in the in the pits of the theaters playing the music. But I'll tell you more about that next time. Okay. Because guess what? You know everything about. We have to find the three movies from thirty (laughs) nine. Yes, we will look that up. Anyway, good talking to you, Bubs. Good talking to you, Alex. Let's talk next week. You got it. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let me see. Let me get my camera up here. Can I do that? There we go. Hello, everybody. For some reason, I, I was having trouble switching using my my keys. You see, I should be able to... Oh, you see, I can't do it now. That's really strange. Hmm. For the whole show, I'm going to be like this, huh? Let me see here. That doesn't go either. Hmm. Son of a bitch. You know, I just... It's one thing or another, it, you know? See, I have to go up here, and then I do that, and it'll work, but... Otherwise, it doesn't uh, it doesn't work immediately. Anyway, let me go to the uh, phones. Let me open up Skype lines uh, so I don't have the easy switching tonight, I guess. Huh? Oh, well. Uh, they said that you could do it by, I, I was reading, you could do it by hitting certain things, and, I, you know, it doesn't work. Okay. All right. So I'm just waiting for people to call, and uh, we, will, uh, we will do a show here, I, you know. Like, uh, I just, I'm, I'm all, my life is fucked lately. So uh, I still haven't told you why, and I don't know that I'm going to, okay? Uh, but anyway, uh, for some reason, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, thing refuses to, uh, see, I have these keys that I hit that are hot keys, and it should do the switching. Like if I, uh, well, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that later. I'll worry about it later, okay? Here comes Charlie Wallace. Let me see here. Uh, Charlie, you're there, right? Right? Uh, and uh, he should, as soon as we get his, uh, his picture in there. Uh, there we go. And then we can go over to here, and I've got to do it by clicking. There we go. Okay, there we are. Oh, boy. My, my equipment is not working tonight, uh, Charlie, so... I don't know what that means exactly. Can you hear me, Charlie? Oh, wait a minute, I can't hear you. Oh, I have the wrong one up. There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can. There he is. Okay. So anyway, uh, no, I just uh, I have this thing where I, I push. I have things called hot keys, and I can push a hot key, and it will uh, it will suddenly uh, allow me to uh, to switch between things, and I can't uh, hit the hot key, and nothing happens now. Yeah, uh, well, and I keep going online to try and find out why it does that, and uh, there isn't a hotline, and there there isn't a, a a word on how you can do it. They say, oh well, just to put, click off the main switcher, and you'll be able to do it. And I don't. That doesn't do it. And I switch on the switcher, and that doesn't do it. And I push over to the side, and I do this, and nothing does it. So. I'm stuck with having to click on stuff in order to get it done. Here comes Bree, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, there we have him. Okay, let me uh, let me go here to. Uh, we'll put him in source two here. Um, uh, let me see here. Bree. Hey, I'm in two, huh? No, you're you're. Oh, excuse me, you are in two. Let me cancel that. Let me put him in source one. <laughs> Oh man, this is like such such a. I've been in two all week. Such a cluster fuck here tonight. There we go. There's Bree. Hello, Bree. We can't see your face because it's in the dark, but you know. Nice silhouette, though. Nice silhouette. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's because what what's happening is you've got the uh, ceiling which is lit, and so your uh, camera is deferring to that and lowering you. So if you were to move your camera up, we'd probably see your face. Uh, It's an iPad. Oh, it's an iPad. It's an iPad. Okay. But yeah, I'm back in the States now. 
Oh, uh, this is actually quite late for me. Ten thirty. I usually go to bed at about ten thirty. So. Where, where, where are you in the United States? Uh, I'm in uh, Pittsburgh. Now, are you officially out of uh, out of uh, where you were? Yes. Yeah, out of uh, Dubai. I am. Okay, and and uh, you're in Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah. And why are you there? Just uh, as a temporary measure, or you just decided to come home and yeah. meet, see people, and so on, right? Well, it's uh, in between, uh, you know, the next uh, yeah. job. Yeah, uh, in between the next job. So that's yeah, nice. That. Wait a minute. Let me let me get uh, let me get uh, Jeff here. Uh, let me see here. Jeff, we'll put you in the number three spot. Um, there we go. Okay. Now we got at least three people. Phil is probably not going to call tonight. Because, so that makes it clear for a lot of you folks out there, if you, <laughs> if you really want to, you know. Um, but uh, 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 so, Bree, when are you moving to, uh, where is it? Um, uh, where are you moving to again? Malaysia. Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur? Yeah, yeah. close enough. Oh. That must be hell writing a letter and then putting the envelope your address, Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Well, of course, I guess it's about as long a name as San Francisco. Actually, uh, the address of where I'm going is quite long because uh, I had to write a couple of them out. And it's, uh, they've, they've already, uh, I'm on the email list and they're already setting up all my meetings, you know, for the day I arrive. Literally 9 a.m. on the day I arrive, and uh, my boss was like, "Oh yeah, HR will want to see you, but you can go later. Go at 10:30, but come to the meeting first at 9." So technically, I won't even be officially an employee, but I'll be at the meeting. You know? <laughs> and then already a second meeting has been set up the second day. So, yeah. but I can't I can't complain because they've been waiting for me essentially one year. Uh, mm. since the fall so I understand that they've been eager to have someone in the position yeah and yeah yeah okay well it's a it, you know <clears throat> but it, you, you're looking forward to the job are you yeah yeah I am uh, it's gonna be a change of pace mm. and uh, you know I was I'm, I'm ready for a change of pace how does your significant other feel about the move fine you know She's used Fine. to being schlepped around the world by you. Yeah, this is the, <laughs> like third or fourth time. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> but uh, that's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, so um, um, and and Charlie, how's how's uh, you got heat down there? Is it warm for you? Oh, a cold front came through. It only got up to 108 today. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. It's supposed to be. What is supposed to be tomorrow here? Hold on a second. Let me move off of here and go to my calendar. Uh, oh, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't even have the temperatures up. Wait a minute. I'll go, I'll go look. Uh, let me see here. Let me uh, uh, let me uh, try and get it off my iPhone. Uh, weather uh, tomorrow. The temperature is supposed to be 92 tomorrow, and 97 on Saturday. I thought it was going to get to 100 or something here, but I guess not. I, uh, yeah. Um, but, not tomorrow, but the next day, I think it'll be 99. Really? Well, it says 92, actually, 98 for us here in Manhattan. I, probably where yeah. you are, it's going to be 92. Yeah. But it's a lot more uncomfortable, 92 <clears throat> than 92 here. Yeah, we get it. it today, it was <clears throat> in the 70s. It was really nice. And there was even a breeze out there, but in the apartment, it was humid as hell, you know? So I didn't Did you care. get a lot of rain? Oh, last night there was that storm. A yeah, but how about all day today? I don't know. I slept till 11 in the morning, uh, you know? I've been, I've, been, I've been depressed lately, so I sleep a lot, you know? Uh, so I, I didn't get up till like 11, and by then the rain seemed to have stopped. But I could see outside that it had been raining. So, you know. You really know the show has come to a standing halt when all we're talking about is the weather. Weather. <laughs> you know. 
And uh, hopefully we'll get a few more people here to fill out the uh, citizen panel. Uh, it's still too early to see what the uh, what the traffic will be like. But what, what was it, last night or something? Everybody started calling me all at once. It was like they were gangbanging. Yeah. Me, you know? And uh, I had to like, and I'll put him in there. Because and, 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 you know. I, I do this whole thing myself, folks. There isn't somebody switching this. I do all the switching. So when my little one-button switch doesn't work here, uh, I'm really pissed, you know. Of course, I go to settings, and then I go to hotkeys, and then I reset up the, uh, the uh, quick transition. Uh, I go... Um, stop it there we go and then i i, I uh, uh put it in here and i go wait a minute where, where do i go there we go and now i go okay and then i push the button and it will work see but it won't work when i move it again to try and move it back so uh that's my problem uh yeah fuck you obs fuck everything fuck all this technology <laughs> you know i'm sick and tired of it uh, I just got a new computer. Really? What'd you get? Uh, I I was watching all day on Prime Day, and I I had it down to like three different units, and then ultimately I just I decided now, not getting anything. And I went to Best Buy today, and they had this uh, Asus ZenBook Pro. Yeah. And normally it's going for one thousand seven hundred, mm -hmm. but it was on sale for. 1,400 and then somehow they had marked it 1,200 and then it was an open box item so I got it for uh, 780 bucks oh really that's, wow that's yeah pretty good why does a now this is a laptop right yeah why does it why is it such an expensive laptop I mean and uh, why let me put it this way why is it such an expensive laptop and it's not an apple <laughs> uh, it actually competes with the apple but um, it's a Core i7, 8th uh, generation, or 8th or ninth, and it's got uh, an NVIDIA GeoForce 1050 video card in it. Yeah. And it's got a 4K uh, touch screen, and it also has a, new, a screen pad. Yeah. So it's got two screens, essentially. Yeah. And uh, I think I can show it to you here. Let me see. Let's yeah. see here. There it is. So there's the screen oh. pad, and okay. then there's the touch screen. Oh, okay. Now the touch screen, does that come with it? No. Yeah, it, it's oh. a touch screen, 15.6 inch screen. Oh, oh I see. And so then what... a screen pad, which is a track pad, which turns into a screen. You can do all kinds of things so, on this. So it really has two parts to the unit? No, it, it's like a regular laptop, but where you have a track pad, that trackpad, you can just make it a normal trackpad if you want, but it can do many other things. Uh, it, and it, it essentially is a second screen. Um, and it's got a 512 gigabyte SSD uh, in there. So it's really good. Um, I do audio production with Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to enjoy having that second screen. Um, they, they're, they're competing with the MacBook Pro. Uh, essentially, mm -hmm. but it's cheaper. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it, I got a good deal. I saved almost a thousand dollars on it. Really? And uh, lightning fast, excellent yeah. graphics, and just enjoying it. You know, I'll tell you something though. This, you know, the the solid state uh, storage. Uh, I haven't decided whether I like it or not. I like the aspect I like about it is that you, it's really fast. You know, like booting up a computer takes no time. Um, but the limitation of space is what I think bothers me, you know. Uh, and uh, the fact that there's no such thing as like adding on internal storage and so on and so forth. What I have here with this, with this trash can uh, is that all my, ex all my hard drives are really external hard drives except for the SSD in which I don't like to put too much stuff on there, you know. So it, yeah. it, it really, it, 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 it's a little on the clumsy side. I wish that, uh, you know, some of these machines would say, well, fuck the SSD. We're also going to allow you to use a, a hard drive. What you have to do if you want to have a hard drive space, you have to add it, you know, buy a hard drive and, and just port it to your, uh, to your 
laptop? Well, uh, uh, several of the units have an SSD to start it up, and then they have a regular drive to keep going. So, for example, I don't know if I can do it with this one, but you can have a 128 or a 256 or a 512 as your SSD. That's your startup bootable drive. And then you can put a one terabyte or two terabytes uh, in there if you yeah. want storage. But I have to tell you the truth. I store anything that is important uh, on the cloud. Mm -hmm. And then I have several, uh, I have a four, five, and eight terabyte drives uh, that I will save to. So I don't like to save on the machine itself for a couple of reasons. Yeah. One, I've had hard drives you know, fail before in machines. That's number one. Number two, uh, because my data is oh, on different drives, yeah. if anybody does a ransomware, I can just say, okay, do whatever you want there. I've got it in five other places, and I've got it on the cloud. So I, think we're I try to mix and match. I think we're talking beyond what people want to talk about, yeah. I guess, because we, we, <laughs> yeah, we lost three people on that one. Uh, you know, um, so it's a, it's not going to be an exciting show tonight, folks, because uh, we you know when we the more people we have, the more kind of diverse it becomes. Uh, and when I only have three people, then it's limited to what the three of us uh, have on our minds at the time. How about you, Jeff? What do you have on your mind? Well, today I just cooked, and I made clams for everybody, and they loved it. Really. Uh, yeah. Wow. You like that? Huh? Yeah, you I'll, like that? Yeah, I like that. I like I like clams. I, at one time in my life, I didn't have a taste for them, and then I got a taste for them. And then yeah. once you get a taste for them, you're kind of addicted to them, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I just cook it like Spanish style. Yeah, Spanish style? What in the, in a marin in some kind of a, a tomato sauce? No, I don't put tomato sauce. Just wine. Uh huh. Okay. And yeah. Garlic and, yeah. and onions and and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I uh, 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 clams are nice. They're really good. They're terrific. Well, let's see. We've talked about food. We've talked about the weather. We've talked about a new computer. That's about <laughs> it for tonight, folks. We'll see you soon. <laughs> I'm wondering hey, you why. Know I, I'm wondering why. Strange. I, why I didn't go down and do the uh, Jim Bohannon show tonight? I stayed here because I thought, oh, everybody will be calling, and I have to do my show for my people, and I, I don't want to let them down because last week I took two days off, and then tonight I really felt like taking the night off because I went through another bout of depression. But uh, you know, I'm here. So if I'm here, where the fuck are you? Yeah, Bill's not even here. You guys can call. Well, I'm in, in a way, we can see. I mean, we can talk about a lot of stuff here without being interrupted. You know. <laughs> hey, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know for what it's worth, but uh, I, you know, I live an expat life. I come back to the states for a couple of weeks every year. Yeah. And I see our country through different eyes. You know, and. There are a lot of things that are quite disturbing to me about our country um, and the way that it operates. Mm -hmm. And I, I sort of have known these things, but then they come back like, uh, I, I don't want to go on and on about it, but I'll just give you a couple examples. Like I, um, I used to have a 5% off red card at Target. It was tied to American Express and you put money on it and you get 5% off. Well, they, they stopped doing that after I left last year. So this year I said, all right, I'll get the credit card because I want to get the 5% off. And they rejected, they rejected me. And okay. they said, well, you don't have any activity. So I checked my credit. I don't have any U.S. activity for the last 15 years. But, um, you know, it, so you can't get, so in other words, I have, I, I consider myself perfect financial situation. I, I have a student loan debt that I pay off. But I don't have any major credit cards and no debts. But they won't give you a credit card because they want you to have a credit card so they can charge you interest and hope you screw up on a monthly payment. Yeah. But actually, not having a credit card, I think I'm more credit worthy than having one and messing up on it. You know, and so it's it's just really strange. And then all of the TV shows are so graphic and violent 
and really, I mean, kind of crazy. And then you have uh, prescription drugs all over the place. You know, I, I don't take any uh, prescription drugs, you know, and, and I'm made to feel like somehow I am uh, less than, you know, like I should be taking five kinds of different drugs. It, and it's just ridiculous. And the things you see in the news are just absurd. They, they're, they're absolutely absurd. You know, this Jeffrey Epstein thing is like top headline every two seconds. Okay, the guy is, is uh, bad, you know? So send him to jail, do the thing. But it's top of, you have, he is tried and true and convicted. And, and you well, know, that, uh, that's, the part, know, that's the part that bothers me is that we tend to convict people in the press. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein may be the biggest creep on the planet. I don't know that. I don't know Jeffrey Epstein. I imagine if I knew him, I wouldn't like him, okay? Uh, I'd say there was something kind of funny about that guy. But nevertheless, the fact of the matter is that he uh, has already been tried in the press because everybody's going, oh, that creep. Oh, that, he, oh, you know, is, Hey, he he did what he did. He served time for it. Now is now, and this is an entirely different case. And unless you know it personally, from personal uh, experience, then shut the fuck up and let the guy have his day in court. You know? Um, I'm sick of this prejudging people now. And uh, Jeffrey Epstein today... Uh, they were going for a bail hearing on him, and the judge denied bail based on the fact that he was a flight risk, which is a reasonable uh, uh, feeling uh, because he does own a jet, you know, and he, he uh, two jets, okay. Uh, he can have one take off in one direction, another one take off in another direction, and nobody would know which one he was on, okay. Uh, so in that respect, I, I see a certain, I have a certain sensitivity towards it. But then saying that he was a menace to the community, uh, listen, I think Donald Trump's a menace to the community, all right? <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that no one should be denied bail. Uh, the bail should be based upon what you consider are the risks of the person fleeing, and you should make the bail high enough that they don't want to flee, all right? And quite frankly, to tell you the goddamn truth, when it comes to Jeffrey Epstein, if he wanted to flee, great. We don't want him around here. And, <laughs> and you know, how's he a threat to the community if he escapes, you know? I mean, I just, I, I, I feel that it's, yes, it's, it's an important case. It's an important case from the standpoint of how did he get away with it the first time so that he only spent 13 months in jail? There, there are a lot of questions to be asked there. But right now, this case is a case on its own, and it has to be adjudicated. I mean, there wasn't a person listening to me right now that didn't think Kevin Spacey was guilty in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Guess what? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, you got to let somebody have their day in court. And by the way, sometimes they have enough money so they can skate. All right? But here's what happens. This is interesting. What happens to a guy, especially like Jeffrey Epstein, who... He only has a half a million dollars, and I say only has a half a million dollars because compared to everybody else, he's a piker, all right? I don't know how he has two jets on, on, on $500 million, okay? But he does. Um, he probably rents them out a lot is what he probably does. Um, but, uh, it, he, you know, he doesn't have a, that much money uh, to make him the same kind of flight risk as, say, any number of other people are billionaires, okay? Dare I say, Ep Jeffrey Epstein may have less money than Donald Trump, and I hate to admit that, you know. But all I'm saying is, is that I just don't, I don't understand why we immediately, uh, oh, uh, bail should never be used as a punishment. Bail is only a guarantee that you're going to show up in court. And if you have a lot of money, they probably should charge you much more for bail because your money makes you more of a flight risk. But what they do, and this is, I'm sure they've done it already, I bet he can't get access to his funds, to his own money, because they freeze everything. 
So now they freeze everything, and he's supposed to hire lawyers to defend him. How does he do that? So th this is where we start going a little crazy on this shit, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of a court case right now, uh, and um, it has cost us a bloody fucking fortune. I mean, at least a fortune for us, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, we're literally rolling the dice now. This is a this is a bet we made that we're going to come out okay on this deal. But if we don't, we've just spent well so far fifty five thousand dollars, and I imagine we'll spend another thirty before the court when the court when we after the trial after the trial is over, and then if it goes to appeal, that's more money it'll cost. We could wind up spending over a hundred thousand dollars on this deal. And while we may be able to say, okay, well, we want our money back from the parties that have put us in this position, one of them could go bankrupt, and the other could just refuse to pay because he's the landlord, you know? I mean, it's, it's just, and it shouldn't cost us all this money to defend ourselves in this case. To begin with, it's two people fighting each other, and we're sitting in the middle like the child of the family that's breaking up. You know, waiting for the dust to clear. And I just think people are of our age and of our means and of uh, and the fact that we were caught in the middle, we shouldn't have to put out this kind of money to defend ourselves. We should be able to defend ourselves without the benefit of having to have put out tons of money to do this. And a judge should say, enough is enough. These guys can't afford to pay this much. But what happens? The landlord runs out the clock. He's got, uh, uh, you know, uh, resources that are um, uh, endless, okay, financially. He's running out the clock on this deal. He can continue to run out the clock until we go broke. And we're at a point where we can't say, well, we quit. You know, we give up. So, I mean, the whole court system, everything is just terrible. And, and uh, uh, you know, I've... I, 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 you know, don't even get me started. Yeah, yes, yes, Jeff. Does the owner own that whole building? Yeah. Or just oh, the building. Parts of it. No, the whole building. This this place isn't a condo. Yeah. This place isn't, uh, uh, you know, um, what what's the other thing? Condo and a. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what the other configuration okay. is. Huh? So, so everybody who lives there is, is a renter. Yes, everybody's a renter. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and, uh, and, and you got this landlord and uh, uh, he, uh, he, he screwed over the, I think, the guy who rented this apartment who then turned around and screwed us over. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, he, he he can he's in the worst position of all the landlord he, he's in a terrible position but he can run out the clock on this thing he can drive all of us broke trying to get him to pay up because if he loses this case and they say okay you owe this guy this much money and then he owes you this much they'll just go to appeal that's another two fucking years you know they've got to they've got to change the whole legal system. The only people who benefit from the legal system are the fucking lawyers. Yep. And they love every inch of it. You know. That's why they went to law school. And that's why they went to law school. You know, and I, and and I thank God I've got a, we've got a good lawyer and we're happy with the work they do and they're certainly on our side, but they're not cheap. You know, and and uh, if I wanted a cheap lawyer, we'd be out of this apartment by now. You know, <laughs> so I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just uh, it gets me very, very depressed. Uh, I, you know, why should why should the landlord have endless resources and I don't, and he can just play out the clock and I can't, and that somewhere in the legal system there has to be something to equalize that out where you could complain, well, this guy's got an endless amount of money and I don't, I need it, I need some kind of help here, you know, and relief. But instead it just goes on and on and on and on and there's this, we, I can't tell you how many mediations we had 
until it came to the other day, well, no, uh, we're, we, neither of us can agree. That's the other two guys. We're ready to settle. Give us an offer, you know. But they're not willing to settle. They're playing pissy with each other, and we're, we're, we're stuck with our own legal bills to defend against that. So this goes on and on and on. So when you were talking about it, uh, Bree, uh, yeah, the legal system in this country sucks, you know. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, uh, and what, you know, a guy like, a guy like uh, Epstein uh, does, hopefully has endless amounts of money and can defend himself very nicely. Uh, but uh, if somebody else were in the same trouble and they were just accused of it and didn't have the money, they're going to jail. And that, that yeah. we shouldn't have a system where he with the most money skates. But we do. Yeah. If you don't we think do. Harvey Weinstein's going to skate, you're nuts. Okay? Uh, meanwhile, Louis C.K., who didn't have a lot of money, is not skating particularly. But then again, nobody's charging him with anything either. That was, uh, that's, that's, that, well, that's my rant for tonight. Did it make any sense at all? Yeah. 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 You know. uh, and mm -hmm. I, I, you know, so, I mean, Jeffrey Epstein, eh, you know, do I care? No. I mean, Marjorie goes, let's put his ass in jail. And I go, come on, you know. I, are our lives going to be any safer because he's in jail? You know. Uh, if you're a parent, keep your kids away from him. That's, that's yeah. the best way. You know, but yeah, sometimes you got sometimes you got to make your own decisions to do things or not do things. Well, I because wonder. The law is not uh, necessarily for your benefit. Well, it's alleged that, for instance, he had uh, sexual relations with uh, like, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, 11 year old or a 10 year old. Mm -hmm. It's all alleged. OK, uh, that being the case. All right. It's alleged that he did that, and uh, but the question is, where were the parents? Yeah. I mean, why why were suddenly these kids not with the parents, but with Jeffrey Epstein, getting molested? I mean, uh, is are these parents who were so overwhelmed by Epstein's money that they were just handing their kids over to him? I think that that happens. Yeah, you know, because. Um, you know, there are, uh, you know, in some of the media reports, it said that, you know, he would get the girls to come over and for a $200 massage and, you know, maybe 300 400 yeah. And, you know, for many people, that is, I mean, and it would be to any, where, where, a lot of people, a lot of money. Where did I read today that somebody did an article on him and that... Uh, the idea of menopause made him sick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if he if he did all the things he did, you know, it's pretty creepy because I can't see why he would. I've never, I my, I would never want to have sex with a child. I wouldn't even want to have sex with a child when I was a child. Okay, you know, um, uh, although I did when I was. 16 have sex with an, uh, or no actually I didn't have sex till I was 18 but my girlfriend was 17 and that I think was underage in California at the time uh, but you know if in California if you had a, a 15 year old boy having sex with a 15 year old girl 16 year old girl he could be charged with statutory rape you know even though he's younger even though he's <laughs> younger yeah so you know, it's all crazy. It's all crazy. But uh, what do you think? Uh, the, I mean, Marie, it's got to just gall you what this president of ours has been doing this week. You know, Who? Our, yep. our, our president, Donald Trump. Well, um, this is another thing. <laughs> we just... Uh, it's just kind of unreal what's uh, what's happening. I saw the four female uh, congresswomen mm -hmm. give their talk, and they, you know, one of the first things they said was, "Don't let him, don't take the bait." And then I just thought, 
but that's exactly what you're yeah, doing. Well, that's exactly <laughs> what they were doing. Yeah. And but then again, it's a distraction. But then it's again, all a distraction. Then again, Bree, if if the president of the United States said something like that about you, and we could easily say, go back to where you came from. Uh, which one, Dubai or? <laughs> Kuala Lumpur, or, I'm in between. You, you know, but uh, uh, it, you, you almost feel you have to reply. It isn't a matter of taking the bait. It's a matter of defending your honor, you know. And these women did nothing <clears throat> except be anti-Trump and speaking their piece. Uh, and it's, it, it's interesting. They were all women, and they were all women of color. Yeah. You know? There wasn't one person there, what, what, there wasn't a male there, and there wasn't a, a white male there, okay, or even a white woman there. He went out against three, four uh, racially diverse women, okay? Uh, and his wording was terrible. And then last night he has this, uh, this uh, uh, rally, you know, one of his Nazi rallies that he holds every now and then. And he, uh, you know, he was talking about uh, which one was it? Uh, the uh, the one that was from Somalia. Uh, and Omar. Ilhan Omar. Omar. And all of a sudden, the audience starts going, throw her out or something like that. Mm -hmm. Send her back. Send, send her, her back. back. Send yeah. her back. Send her back. And uh, Trump today got a calls from quite a few Republicans who said, you let that go last night, and that's not the kind of way we want to be as Republicans. We don't want to be known as the go back to where you came from Republicans. And these were, these were some it was very quiet because they didn't do it publicly, but they talked to the president or Trump. I don't like to call him the president. <laughs> and and uh, so he gives a, he does a mea culpa, very one of the very few he does in which he says. Well, I didn't like what they were doing last night. And then in, in, what, in something that he always does, and, and he, he thinks he, he isn't on record for some strange and unusual reason. Uh, but uh, uh, he says, uh, plus if, you know, I, immediate, I, didn't, I didn't react to it. I just immediately kept going. So that's how I stopped them. <laughs> then you go to the tape. To begin with, <laughs> there's 13 seconds between yeah. the start of that and when he starts speaking again. All he had to do was continue speaking, and they would have stopped, okay? Because they want to hear every word their fearer has to say. Uh, yeah. And if you watch him, uh, for a moment, when they start going... What would throw her out? What, what was what was the uh, send her back? Send her back. Send her back. He kind of looked and stopped and kind of nodded with a kind of approval. It was very short and it was very small, but it was there. And then he didn't say anything for about another 10, 12 seconds. Well, but that that's what he has said. Yeah, he said, "Go back to your country." So he's already said that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but so. he didn't like the chanting. He thought that was wrong today, and that he he tried. Um, to, he tried he'll to... he'll say that now, yeah. but in three or four or five days, he'll pick it back up yeah. if it works for him. If it's working, yeah. that's how he operates. He lets it happen. If there's enough of an outrage, he'll kind of say something about it, like "Yeah, I didn't didn't totally go along with that," and then three or four or five days after that, yeah. it'll become the mantra. Now, every time he does his rallies, send her back is going to be the call. He has a couple of those, build the wall, send her back. These are very simple uh, and powerful messages. And they, they strike a chord with the people who support him and can mobilize them to get them out to vote. Uh, they, they may not know specifics or details, but they, they will remember this you know, negative feeling that exists there about her and about the others. Yeah. And he'll be very effective. You see, the, uh, the four congresswomen, they don't have the biggest bully pulpit, although you could argue AOC does, or Cortez, as Trump calls her. But um, their message gets mixed up. It's, it's a little bit too complex and nuanced. And it, that will work with a certain amount of people. 
<laughs> but Trump reaches a much larger number of people much quicker, and he's better at branding and messaging. Yeah, um, but you know. uh, but it, how is this? You know, I of course he's this is playing to his base, who he believes in playing to. But the question is, that base cannot get him elected. All right, it's not large enough. Uh, he has to appeal to far more than the base, and that's what he did during the last election. He appealed to far more than his base. But I, you know, my point is, well, has he lost all those other people? I mean, do people feel comfortable with a president? who's perceived as a racist. Um, Unless they're racist that, themselves, then they're very comfortable with it. That, that's, that could be part of it. But uh, what I heard was that with swing voters, they side with Trump on this. That the swing voters side with Trump. They, they don't, they're scared of hearing the word socialism. Well, that's and, yeah, that's the other thing. I heard a guy yes, this guy from California. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Blonde-haired guy. I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, and he was he was saying, you know, socialism is a threat to democracy. And I'm going, what? You know, socialism and democracy aren't even the same animal. You know, they don't they're not the same thing. If you want to say, oh. Uh, uh, it's it's the enemy of capitalism. Uh, well, we can argue that, okay? Or you want to say that totalitarianism uh, uh, is the enemy of democracy? We can argue that, but you can't mix oil and water together. You know, yeah. it, it yeah. just doesn't work. Yes, well, yes, Jeff. Yeah. One thing that I find that really irritates me is that all of a sudden all the Republicans are concerned about anti-Semitism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you, I never heard that they were that concerned about anti-Semitism. Yeah. When I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 hey, uh, Alex. Wait a minute. Ah. Hold on a second. Phil, hey, Phil you, you come on and you don't hear that there are other people talking at the moment. And plus, well, you're, too bad. you're so loud. <laughs> That it's, oh, uh, okay. I'm on the plane. You're on the plane. Say hello. Huh? Yeah, this is hey. Roslyn, New York. I hate Trump. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> she <laughs> hates Trump. <laughs> I just, I just want well, that on well good. Page. Don't don't let uh, on the rest of the trip. Don't let him forget it. Okay. <laughs> yes. I've actually never met anyone who voted for Trump. So it's going to be an interesting ride. At least, yeah. At yeah. least it's short. She she asked, "What do I do on the show?" <laughs> Annoy people. He annoys people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm going to lose the internet in a minute. So, uh, good night, everybody. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, mm. I'll tell you my uh, tales of woe on Tuesday. Uh, uh, All right. Uh, well, on Tuesday, why aren't you here tomorrow? Oh, uh, what is today? Today is Thursday. Thursday. Oh yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. He'll see us All right. tomorrow. All right, take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Let's replace the guy in the airplane uh, calling us calling us from an airplane. Well, see, those are the things that uh, I wouldn't – I don't say that I hate Trump. I don't say that because there are aspects. I just – I don't really think that we can have a conversation about anything because it always devolves into name-calling or – you know, we hate about this and hate about that. And I just don't, I don't think it accomplishes much. I think it's all just, uh, you know, one big reality TV show. And it's, it's all kind of well, a joke. Well, you know something, I got to tell you that I, you know, it's a question of how do you handle this. Um, uh, Friedman in the uh, New York Times today wrote a op-ed piece about the fact that Trump is going to win this election if the Democrats don't get it together. And what he said was getting it together was start avoiding Trump. Start avoiding talking about Trump. Start avoiding going after Trump. Instead, lay your case before the American public on what you want to do to get them more jobs, what you want to do to make things better financially in this country, what you want to do to make things better uh, uh, so far as the environment is concerned and so on. And most of all, campaign on returning civility. 
<coughs> to America and to the political process. And you may find an audience for that. You know, you may find it, but if you're just doing nothing but going after Trump, uh, you're, you're, you're losing, a, you're running a, a bet you can't win, you know? Uh, and he may, be, he may be right, because Trump plays everybody. He plays the press who got him elected the last time. And he plays uh, all the all the politicians. He plays the, uh, the, uh, the 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 four women, who immediately reacted to what he was saying. You know, I mean, it was it it it's 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 kind of um, kind of interesting. Here comes Kevin. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anyone who uh, I don't know if you saw the CNN draw picking thing. It again, it's so ridiculously absurd. If did if you watched any of that, you know well, I watched you, you last say, game. You say that, hello, Kevin. You're saying the draw picking. You mean the uh, the at CNN they had a, a draw to see who was going to be on first each draw, night. second draw, final draw. Mm -hmm. It's you know I watched uh, uh, Alec Baldwin does a show uh, called The Match Game, mm -hmm. you know, and then I watched this Hollywood game. Our TV shows are really weird, but. Um, and they're like the repeats of, th of things that we had 20 years ago, and they just redo it, and they laugh, and they put in stupid well, laughs. Well, that's because we, so we don't have any new ideas. But here's the, here's the thing. I, to begin with, what bothers me about these debates is how dare you say that four of them can't be in the debates because they didn't get a certain amount of people. Everybody should have a space at, that po at those podiums uh, because... How is the little guy who may have some great ideas ever going to get his thoughts across to the great American public if he isn't on the panel with everybody else? I mean, how dare you decide that only, well, we only have room for 22. If you have a stage that can fit, uh, um, what, 11 people or whatever, mm -hmm. then make two more podiums, okay? And, and then each night nights. add the other four. <clears throat> You know. Or do three nights, you know, or, do three nights. or, 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 don't, or don't, know. don't even do them at all because it's still a year and a half before the election. But, but I got to tell you, I don't see anybody that can beat Trump. I just don't. Kamala Harris is I, I every time she speaks, it sounds like she's whining. You know, she's she's everything. I, don't, is passionate. I, don't, I, I disagree with you, Bree. I don't think she sounds whiny. I think uh, she's the least whiny of any of them, to be honest with you. I think she's more take charge. Than she is <clears throat> whiny. Anybody here find her whiny? No. I don't. No. Nope. She puts she puts passion in everything. I mean, you could ask her, "Hey, I got a Pepsi instead of a Coke." You know? Yeah. Oh, you know, it's just so much. I can't believe that. That's let me listen. Let me tell you, Coke is better. I mean, she she'll take any item, and all of a sudden she gets way too passionate about things that. I don't know. Well, passion she tries is, to turn it all emotional, pa feelings. Pa and, passion is wrong? On every single issue. What, what do you mean on every <laughs> single issue? Uh, uh, did you see her on The View? I see a little bit of that. Yeah. You, you see a little bit of that in her? I, uh, she turned everything is up to 11, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I didn't like the way she attacked Biden. Uh, I think he you know, deserved it. it. I think he deserved it. I think he deserved it, but more than that, not only did he deserve it, uh, he should have been able to get out of that. And mm -hmm. he did. You know, if he can't get out of that, what's Trump going to do to him? Yeah. You know? Uh, well, I, I think it weakens all of them, and Trump's going to win. I mean, uh, yeah, but Biden went, oh, why did Kamala Harris do that to me? I thought we were all friends. Fuck you. You're not a friend. You're a competitor, you <laughs> For competition. Yes, uh, Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I just can't go with Biden at all. I, I, I just, I don't think he has much to say. He doesn't you know? look like he has any energy left for the job. Yeah. You know, uh, I look. I know what it's like to be his age. I'm a little older than he is by about a year or two. And I, I, I don't have the strength for crying out loud to do this show every night, you know. So it's not just the strength; it's just that he doesn't say much. 
Uh, he doesn't say much. I, I, you know, I did like his uh, his medical idea. You know, for the the, the uh, you know, uh, he rather than Medicare for all, taking Obamacare and expanding it, and uh, a, a whole bunch of things like that, where it would still come out to being kind of the same thing, but more something that the American public could find palatable. I mean, they should be able to find Medicare for all palatable, but since none of them or most of them are on, aren't on Medicare, they don't know what it's like, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that's the problem. Uh, in England, they you try to take you try to take their health care away in England. You try to take the they somebody tried to take the health care away in Canada, and they fought it tooth and nail. They love it. They love it. You know, they consider it one of their national treasures. It's one of the things they point to is to how wonderful they are that they have these kinds of plans in their countries. So, you know, what the hell? I, I had a great experience in, in Australia. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I, I have to take a lot of drugs and, and I have to get them tested. And I was taking Coumadin at the time. And they go, oh, what do I do? Where do I go? He says, just go to the hospital. And I said, well, what about... You know, I'm not a, uh, an Australian citizen. How can I do this? You know, they said, "Don't worry, we take care of anybody." And I walked in. They took the blood test. They gave me the information. It was terrific. It was like the best. Well, uh, I, 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 I was in France and got sick, and I got uh, I got strep throat, and so uh, I went to the hospital. And the hospital said, we can't treat you here because you're not a citizen. But here's a private doctor you can go to. So they gave me the address, and somebody drove me over to the private doctor, and I went into his office, and it was shabby. I mm. mean, it was like private doctors just don't make a hell of a lot of money over there because there's the National Health Service that they have. And I saw the doctor, and he gave me the right stuff, and I got rid of the strep throat. But I got to see what it was like to be a non-governmental doctor in a country because you can't, you know, and it, it really, he, he looked like he was sitting there waiting for somebody to show up. You know, so that was my only time I ever had anything to do with national health. Uh, or they don't call it national health there. I don't know what they call it. Uh, but... Uh, uh, it was, it was, um, you know, I mean, uh, and I've gotten sick a couple of times in France, but I've just called doctors. Uh, the hotel would call a doctor, and he'd come in. You know, house calls with the with the case and everything. That was nice to see for a change, too. Uh, so, anyway. I remember the story that if you got sick in France, go to another country. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because all, I don't know if that's most, a well, joke. Most, most of those countries will take you, even yeah. if you're from another country. Uh, France won't, but France will help you find a doctor. You know. Yes, uh, yes, Charlie. Uh, my daughter lives in Amsterdam, yeah. and she's still an American citizen. And she f had an accident where she fell off a bike and got her foot caught in the spokes or something, <laughs> and it tore up her. She had to have three operations. It didn't cost her a dime. They treated her for free, just like if she were, were a citizen of, of, of Amsterdam. See, yep. why, now why, what is wrong with us that we it's can't do this? What, is, what yep. is with it that somehow all these countries that, of course, Trump would like to think are backward nations, managed to solve this whole problem? They, they got and they spend they, less on medical care than we do. Well, I think it's because we, we've commercialized our system. Uh, yeah, you know, be it's like with our media, and you know everything is commercialized so much that we forget what originally it was like to be human. <clears throat> Another thing is around here where I am, the weather is so beautiful, and everybody has their air conditioners on all the time, <laughs> and there's no. I walked the other day between these different uh, shopping places. And people just look at you like, oh, my gosh, there's a person walking, you know, <laughs> and like, what, don't you have a car? You know, you can't afford a car. And then 
people still use straws and plastic bags. They'll give you plastic bags like it's going out of style. And it's, it just amazes me. And then I look in the parking lot and there are these, there's these little tiny women with these huge SUVs. I mean, there's so many SUVs, you can't even see a regular car, you know? And, and yet, and then we wonder, there's the, like this heat wave coming and there's like flash flood warnings. And then, and people are wondering, doesn't anybody stop and think there's a connection here? And then like you hear all this violence and then you, you turn on the TV screen, it's all violence, like all day long. It's absurdly violent. I, I just see, we're just so far off kilter that I don't even know how we get back I know. if we can. And maybe there is no getting back. The one problem that yeah. I've been having, uh, I don't want to get into it much, but I, I'm, I'm trying to get a second opinion. Uh, and I have been dealing with a major hospital here in New York City to get a second opinion. It's just I want to know about a process and, and, and what my options are and whether maybe my own private doctor isn't overcalling the situation. Do you know how hard it is just to get an appointment for a second opinion? I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, all I want is to go into a doctor and say to him, okay, here's what my doctor's doing. Here's what he thinks, blah, 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 blah. I don't know, you know, all I know is this doctor, but I don't know what the true options are and blah, 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 blah. Would you give me your opinion? You mm -hmm. know, here's, here's uh, mo the information that I have about what's been done so far and so on and so forth. Just give me the information because I want a second opinion. And by the way, I went to this hospital's website and they have a whole thing on second opinions and they said, by the, you know, come on down and see us for a second opinion, <laughs> you know. Uh, we welcome it. You should have a second opinion on everything. And now I'm trying to get it. It's like I'm trying to get into fucking college. You know? Uh, yeah, that's when the marketing and the branding does not do meet not the reality. Inside, do not meet the reality. Right. Yeah. No. So I'm still. How sorry. often does that happen? Yeah, yeah. Always. Well, please send us some of these papers and those papers, and uh, we'll get back to you. And then they don't get back to you, and you're going. You know, I, I could be dead by now. Who knows, you know? Uh, Jeff, you've been through this kind of thing, right? Yeah, I've gone through it, but I, I don't know. I've, I've had some good luck as far as uh, scheduling mm -hmm. to meet me and to go into New York, actually, for another opinion compared to... I usually go to Yale, so uh, I thought, well, let me get, get somebody else to take a look at what, what's going on. Yeah. But uh, they once I was there and they were talking to me, they said they were almost like trying to to organize me to have the surgery in New York instead of in Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. Even though that wasn't the reason that I was there, I was there for a second opinion. That's, yeah. You know. <laughs> Well, I mean, the thing is that, uh, you know, I, they, they told me originally, well, yes, you know, you, you're going to have some kind of test. And when you have that, come back and then call us and we'll, we'll see you and give you our opinion or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then I realized that even the test that they were going to give is not something I want to go through before I know that I should be going through it. And so I'm now having a trouble getting them to realize that I have to see a doctor because I want to know uh, before this planned test that that I'm doing the right thing, you know, yeah. and and I'm, I'm asking real experts here. I'm not asking some, you know, you know, and I don't know that my doctor isn't the greatest doctor in the world, you know, that that privately everybody goes, oh, he's so good. He knows exactly what he's doing. I don't know that the guy runs a crummy looking office, you know, <laughs> now, but that should have nothing to do with whether he's any good or not, you know. But his organizational skills are to be uh, questioned, okay? So anyway, so I'm, you know, even to get a second opinion is a real problem in this country. And I've, I've got all the insurance. Don't worry about it. You're going to get paid, you know? That's, it's crazy. But w getting back to what um, uh, Bree was saying about violence uh, on television, give us an example of what you saw. Oh. I mean, you just turn it on and uh, it's, you know, sex and violence is just so pervasive um, that yeah, I can't even, 
uh, stay tuned into something. In, in all the channels are just always that, you know. Well, don't you get a lot of those same channels over there in Dubai? I mean, I'm sure you get Netflix in Dubai. Well, Netflix, yeah. But, I mean, there you're choosing the programming that you want to watch. Whereas here, it's just sort of always running, you know, on all the different channels. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to, I mean, I, I, I can definitely make a better mental note of it over the next few days if I think about it. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's just, uh, every time you tur turn the channel, it just seems like it's there. Yeah. Are you talking about regular shows? Are you talking about the news or, or what? Yeah, news, news regular shows. Well, all of um, it. All of it, you know. It's just it's all that. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know that the, uh, of course, I, you know, uh, the violence. I'm trying to figure out what you mean by the violence on television, because uh, there, there may be a lot some violence on cable, but on the networks, they're kind of, they're kind of wimpy, if you want my opinion. Yeah. You know, they're rather sedate. Yeah. Uh, but then again, yeah. Well, it seems like the only thing on is like America's Got Talent. You know, every other night. No, America's Got and... Talent's only on once a week. Oh. <laughs> Seems like it's on. But that, there's no <laughs> violence on that show. Yeah, no. <laughs> the violence there. You know, maybe somebody's throwing a, a knives at some woman on a wheel. <laughs> you know, but outside of that, there's no violence. You know, um, I haven't seen any violence on The Price Is Right. <laughs> no, no. Um, but anyway, how you doing, Kevin? Mm. Eh, hanging in there. Yeah, how do you feel about uh, about our uh, our Fuhrer and his statements about uh, go back to where you came from? Oh, you know, <clears throat> when I thought uh, when I thought he'd uh, had come back and said when I saw the headline that he was going to avow his Disavow. his uh, yeah. you know his send her back statement, I thought it was going to be oh well maybe he's actually going to do something and then he he you know did his little spiel on uh, during this press conference and i went ah oh, this is the same old crap no no he he didn't disavow his saying it. <clears throat> yeah well that's what i mean he, he disavowed he, what they said he and, 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 the and crowd, just to be seen the crowd is all it is is it to be seen yeah, the crowd <laughs> chanting it and then he yeah and then and then i thought about it and i i thought exactly what you said i said you know there was a good 15 seconds and he nodded a couple times while he while it was going on and i thought you know you're full of crap yeah, no, he did not try to shut it down fast. No, he didn't try to shut it down. He, he said he did, but well, you know what he, he could didn't. have done if he was really a decent person, he would do what John McCain did when that woman said to her that Obama was like a Muslim or whatever, a terrorist, yeah. or whatever. Where where McCain, in spite of the fact that he was running against the guy, said, "No, ma'am, he is an American. He's a good American, and I I uh, uh, I, I like him and uh, I appreciate him." And, and that's one of the reasons why he lost. It's probably one he would of have said, you know, he would have said that she's a member of the representatives. She's in the House. She's working for America. But no, he didn't because he prefaced everything with what he said. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it was it was uh, kind of interesting, that, you know. It was a line of crap. He said, but that's why he lost. I mean, if, if that's why he lost, what, you can't win by being a decent human being in this country? Yeah. You know, but the, prob the pro thing is... That he could have done that. He could have said, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let's not do that. Uh, we may disagree with her, but let's not, uh, let's not chant about this like that. And, and uh, he would have gained some points with me. Yeah, exactly. He w I was waiting for him to say something during the rally, but he didn't. Yeah. He nodded and then went, you know, went on with his speech. Exactly. So, you know... Um... You know, I don't, I don't, I really don't uh, understand it, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, and I what, guarantee you, it'll come back again. What I love, oh yeah, well, he, he, why it was a hit, you know? Uh, yeah, sure. It, it was a hit song. You get up and you do a medley of your greatest hits, and that's one of his greatest hits now. And then he'll say, "Well, I can't stop that. I can't stop what they do out there," you know? Yeah, yeah. What happened? We just lost. Uh, we just lost Ray. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But it, it, it goes back it goes back to, you know, what 
what we were talking about the other night is it, it, it just what he does is <laughs> encourages the base. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and he just encourages the division and he encourages the base and he just gets them riled up and they do what they do. You know what's going to happen? Somebody's going to get killed. I, I, I agree. Something's somebody's gonna good, happen. Somebody's gonna get killed and it you you will be able to point directly to something Trump said as the justification for that person doing it. These there's gonna be a nut out there and he's gonna get fired up and he's gonna do something stupid. And you know, that's the worst thing you can do, either as a performer or as a president or as a public person, and that's give other people a sense of permission. Yes, Jeff. Uh there's a guy in uh, New York who got arrested, and he was trying to do something to one of those four women, and I don't know which one it was, but uh, he got arrested. I guess he tried to beat her up or something like that. Yeah, that's... uh... (laughs) Yes, Ray. What was the motive of the Las Vegas shooter? The Las Vegas shooter, not, not not the one who shot up the country and western festival. Yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah. guy. His motivation, he was I don't right think. Right winger, wasn't he? No, yeah. was it? Was it? I don't think so. I don't think they ever assigned any motivation. I know, but I, I know. I, I'm pretty sure he was a big right wing guy. I don't know if they've ever. If, I don't know. I want to go check it out because uh, they never, they never assign, they never put any motive behind him. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't remember. Well, then there was somebody else who had mailed all the all those uh, all the bombs, bombs and yeah. things to the Congress people. And all. That was a guy down in Florida who had yes. nothing but Trump stuff all over his van. Yeah. Like he may as well have gotten a sign on the back saying "Bust me." Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, well, we're just lucky that that none of these things have come. That actually happened. I mean, they could have. But you see, already. what he's doing, what he's doing with his actions, is giving a sense of permission to certain people. Now, it could be argued, well, they were nuts and they were crazy and they shouldn't have been affected by that. But that's not the point. You don't want to affect those people. You know, you want to be yeah. very careful not to give those people a sense of permission. Yes. They could be nuts, but there's a switch there, and all they have to do, he's flipping the switch. Oh, listen, I, I looked at all those people at that Trump rally last night. Every one of them is capable of going out and killing one of the four women. I mean, they just... Well, if you notice, there was a couple of them on the left side looking at the screen that kind of looked at each other, and they were going, really? They're saying that shit? I, I and bet then there was people on the right side that were, that were joining in, but <laughs> there was a couple of guys on the left side, because I always look at the people behind them to see who's really you know getting into it. And the two guys on the left were standing there going, hmm, they're actually saying, send them back, send them back. And, you know, I, they were Trumpers, but you could tell they weren't exactly joining in I, with the crowd. I, I wonder how many people in those in those audiences are Trump people. Uh, you know. Well, they kicked a couple of them out. Did, did you see that? There was one guy that got walked out, and he had a MAGA hat on, and he flipped it off his head when he was getting walked out. Yeah. And, of course, Trump jumped in and said, yeah, take him out, send him home to mommy, and all that crap. You know, he's stirring it up. Yeah. Boy. Um, why were they throwing the guy out? Was he? Because he he started, you know, going against the MAGA. He was one of the plants, I guess, probably. One, one of, on our side, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he had a MAGA hat on, and then when they caught him, you know, mouthing off, the, you know, they, they escorted him out, and he had a MAGA hat on, and he flipped it off while he was getting or- escorted out. And then Trump turns around and says, yeah, send him back home to mommy. He's going to go to jail, and mommy's going to have to bail him out. And he, he's stirring it up while they're taking him out of the, the auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, you know, going to a Trump rally isn't like going to see your president. It's like going to see a comedian who's holding a large venue comedy show. It is, and yeah. it is. It, it, it's embarrassing. It, it, it's I'll, a show. I'll tell you what bothers me most of all. You know, as a kid, what did you do? You, when when you thought about the president, this was the man who was the moral compass of your country. You know, mm-hmm. and he had a certain special vaunted position in our society, whether you agreed with him or not. And, and every president up until now has taken that seriously, even the ones we didn't like. I mean, even Bush, uh, you know, 
was respectful of the of the of the uh, oath that he took and was respectful of the job he had and of the office of the presidency. This guy has no respect for it. None whatsoever. Zilch, not a nothing. Do you feel that way, Bree? Would you agree with me that he doesn't seem to really yeah. admire the job that he has? I think because he didn't expect he was going to really get it. And, you know, and, and this is what people, you know, I've said it all along, they want to be entertained. And he just keeps being entertaining. But here's the I, don't, I don't even think he believes that stuff. Here's, Honestly, oh, I, I don't, th I don't I, think I, I he don't, believes it. I don't it. think he has any political uh, passion at all. I think he's all about Trump. You know, He thinks that he can stand there and say, I love America, I love my country, and hug a flag, and that's all he needs to do. Well, apparently for most people, that's the that's case. Right. That's all he needs to do. And that's, that's, that's the mentality of the base. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean... Uh, the, the point is that, that uh, it's come to this is what's happened. And what, part of what this, why it's come to what it's come to is the fact that the public has ceased to be able to tell the difference between real life and reality shows and television. Correct. And this is one fucking big reality show. It's not yep. the presidency. Yeah, and they're right. they're buying it up, they're eating it That's up, right. lock, stock, and yep. barrel. You know, so I mean, yeah. what are we going to do? You know, that's 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 the way it, the way it goes. Um, Except you can't change the channel. You no, know, and he dominates. He dominates every day. He dominates the news. I mean, how many <laughs> how many days did we go without hearing from Obama? You know, or he hearing people even discussing Obama. You know, but every day, it's Trump this, Trump that, Trump, 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 Trump. You go over to MSNBC, they're doing nothing but talking about Trump. They may as well call it the Trump Network, for crying out loud. That's right. And they didn't learn their lesson the first time around. If they want to consider themselves to be left-wing, then get on board with the idea that you should ignore this guy, because that'll drive him crazy. But by talking about him all the time, you're just going to get him elected again. Which they probably don't mind because it's another four years of, uh, of a blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why I find it so hard to watch MSNBC now. I'm over watching CBSN because they just re recite the news. You know, Nobody's sitting there with a fucking opinion all the time. And he's feeding off that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm sure. You know, he look. He looks at. He looks at. He looks at MSNBC and says, "Oh, they're you know so left wing. They're walking off the cliff." And and it's damn near true. Now here's the question that I have to ask, and I it always I always am kind of asking this question internally within myself, and that is, Donald Trump writes all the uh, you know has all these tweets. Does he write them? I don't know. I mean, do you do you really think this man can even type fast enough to write these tweets? Well, he sure can't spell, so that part of it's right. Now, <laughs> or does he dictate his tweets, or does he have a tweet writing staff? I don't know. Some of his shit so fucked up. It it, it looks like he does, but I think he does it. Yeah, he probably does while he's sitting on the toilet. Well, that that may be true, but I just don't think that he's even if, if, if most of the spelling is right. Most of the uh, I don't know if you read a lot of them, they're really bad. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just wondering if if he is not the only one writing these tweets, but if he just says, "Go write a tweet saying such and such, and let me okay it before you you hit send," you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what, that could be. He has two different accounts. There's one that he writes, and there's another one that's the official one that's written by other people. What but no one pay, pays attention to because it's not entertaining. What is uh, what, what what is the one that's his? The r real Donald Trump? Yeah, yeah, the other one is like POTUS or something like that. POTUS. Huh? And that, he doesn't. Well, then they got the White House one too. So. 
Yeah, he doesn't write the POTUS ones. Somebody else writes it for him. Yeah, but the real Donald Trump. Uh, That's how, it. How do we know that when somebody calls himself the real this or the real that, they really are the real Donald Trump? Well, there's a blue check mark by it. Twitter checks checks them out. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's verified. Yeah. 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 Uh, by the way, no, it's it's him. By the way, uh, um, you um, let me see here if I can find it here. Let me go. Uh, you, you sent a, a, a thing. I had these things of the uh, of of people who uh, of, of that I did, where I uh, I did my face, you know, as an old person because that that site. Oh, yeah, Russ has got your information. It, well, hold on a second. I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> but here is here, here is the one that uh, Ray did. Look at this, folks. <laughs> let me let me turn on if, if you. Oh my God! It's oh, you, horrible. You gotta do that. Okay, there we go. There we go. There he is. Okay, there he goes. All right. I just thought you'd want to see that, folks. Oh, you can see it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, I just played it yeah, on I'll YouTube. I'll bring that up. So oh, could God. See. Yeah, I did a I did a, a record screen on the iPhone so you could see it going back and forth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, oh, you can record screen on the iPhone. Anyway, you were saying, yeah. Bree about the fact that they can do all this and they can do all that i people have published their uh their uh what their disclaimer about what they can do with your videos with your photos yeah i never do that stuff well no the that's fact all. is that's the same uh it's the same terms and conditions of that facebook has and that youtube has they all say that uh it's to protect their asses you know uh, but I, I don't care. Go ahead, steal my identity. I don't give a shit. You know, I don't have any identity hey. left anymore anyway. So. Hey, Alex, you know, um, being that we're members of SAG-AFTRA, technically we're not supposed to do that, but who cares? We're not supposed to do what? Like like what I did, like turned mine into a video like that. Oh, really? Why? Uh, I don't know. It's some weird violation, but I, no one cares. I'm just well, saying. I guess I'm violating. I, know, I have friends. I guess I'm violating my union by doing this show every night, huh? Yeah, you are actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. After all, I'd be happy to stop doing this if you'll find me a job. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you can shut the fuck up and just keep paying my insurance. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, I'm telling you, this is really amazing. Um, you know, also, something happens on Facebook, and I hate this. I have fi always 5,000 people, which is the maximum you can have on a Facebook page. And if I go under it, I immediately start asking people to join, and the reason I do it is that what happens is that if they see that I go under 500, all these hookers come out of the 5, woodwork. Uh, when I go under 5,000, like 4,999, all these hookers start uh, wanting to be part of my uh, um, part of my Facebook page. Uh, and um, hmm. well, invite them on the show. Yeah, yeah, I, should, I should invite them on the show. Let me see here. I, I, I've Oh, God. Oh, no. And anyway, uh, all, all of a sudden, all these women, you know. And, 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 you know, if Facebook's going to stop the fucking Russians and they can't stop just some two bit hookers, we're in a lot of trouble, you know? Uh, I mean, uh, come on. This is a violation of, of, my, of my personal space. Also, there's a lot of spam that goes through, you know? And that's not good either. By the way, in case people didn't see it last night, let me just quickly show you the uh, the screen of me from uh, there, there. That's me as an as an older man. I know a lot of you are saying, "What's the difference?" Um, but uh, supposedly, this program—did you hear that this program was started by a Russian company to show young people what they would look like if they drank too much vodka? <laughs> That's what I heard, you know. 
but it is right now. It's the, I think it's the most popular app in the business, isn't it? At this moment. Yeah. Gathering all yeah. that data. Yeah. Or face recognition oh, software. Oh, oh, oh there. I wonder why it got so dark. It's because he, you got home, right, Ray? Yes, I'm home. Yeah. I'm home now. I'm in the bathroom now. Oh, really? <laughs> but I won't show you anything that's, you know, obnoxious. <laughs> well, if you want to take a leak, go ahead, Beer. I, I am going to. I'm going to sit, though. You're going to sit? <laughs> Yeah, because my wife hates the splashback. Oh, oh, really? Do you do you have to do you have rules in your house too? Yes. You're gonna go I like do. a puppy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there. We just lost your picture. Oh, I'm sorry. That's because um, I forgot to turn my Uber off. Wait a second. And I just got a request, and I just turned it down. Where's my Skype? Oh crap. Skype, 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 Skype. All we oh, there is we that go. Skype logo. And little, it's bad. I'm driving the throne right now. There you can't drive the car. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> You're supposed to look straight ahead. And this is what internet <sighs> broadcasting is all about, folks. <laughs> There's no FCC bullshit yeah. going on. It's just like, oh, yeah. shoot, I'm gone again. I know, I know. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm coming yeah. back. Yeah. I just got to make sure I signed off. Okay. Okay. Signed off. Um, All right, I'm off. I'm off. Okay, cool. Yes, yes there Jeff. There we go. Jeff. So, I'm curious if anybody who's on the on the show right now lives in a state that was uh, that got Trump to get elected. Hmm. No. Like, no. Charlie. Uh, let's see. I know that yeah. Kevin isn't. Uh, I think Arizona and Texas both went for Trump. So you, that, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So uh, is, the, Connecticut didn't go for Trump, did it? No. 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 Uh, nope. Yeah. So we're we're fine. You know. Uh, wow. Well, you know, it's, it's, it, it, would Arizona ever consider a Democrat or not? Yeah, he's not as popular here as he what is in Texas. Yeah. And, you know, who knows if he's going to hold Texas. A lot of people are saying that he's losing Texas. Yeah. I can't remember the reason why exactly, but he is losing Texas. So, you know, all of this is, uh, there goes Ray again. We lost <laughs> No, Ray no, it's because of stupid, God, this phone, you have to, like, st actually you have to stay on the Skype screen or you disappear. Oh, well, you just yeah. learned a lesson, <laughs> didn't you? I, I was trying, everything's cool now. Yeah, I won't ever disappear again. How long is it taking you to pee? Well, the thing is, is I have to now get up. Oh, I see. No, I didn't All right, so here I go. Okay. I'm so getting up now. Splashback where? Well, I, there's a, I showed her this video. They, they did this video where they were showing, they did infrared of, like, somebody yeah. peeing, peeing in a toilet for a week. And, like, all piss, right, like, but... splashes everywhere, all over the walls, yeah. everything. So now I can't, now I have to sit to pee like a Frenchman. Really, that's her right. aim <laughs> is to keep the restroom clean. Your aim will help that a lot. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but there's less splashback. The least splashback is if you aim towards the front of the toilet bowl. But but only twenty percent or less of people do that, of men do that. Really? Yeah. Boy. Proven. Really? Okay, I guess I got to get up now. Yeah. Uh, Depends on what design hard. of toilet you have. Oh, you that's know, true. You can, you can get one with a low water. Uh, yeah, right. Well, I also get a bidet. Got, it's more fun. I also got Eat this. Uh, I also, You're not supposed to pee in the bidet. <laughs> <laughs> do a wash. I also yeah. There was a song at a festival where the woman said, I eat a high fiber diet. And I have a low flush toilet. I make every gallon count, or something like that. It was a song. I don't know, but I got something wrong with my toilet. My turds get stuck. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> and then I got to go to the I got to go to the other bathroom to get the plunger because she won't let me keep the plunger in this bathroom. See, another one. Of well, the, they're the, they're too long. They're too long. The women like, in the house always want to rule the bathroom. Yeah, like, they always how, do. like my question is, how much stuff do you have in the bathroom, and how much stuff does she have in the bathroom? Yeah, 
you know. Shit loads. I've got I've got a toothbrush and uh, some toothpaste. That's about it, you know. Uh, A razor, a razor. But you know all the lotions and potions in the medicine cabinet and the. The, uh, you know, and then plus the rules we have, you know, like, would you leave the seat down? No, I'm not going to let the seat, leave the seat down. Screw it. You can't, you can't, you can't lower the seat when you want to use it. And by the way, oh, then she says, and don't forget to spray. Yeah, but you're asleep and the poop smell is going to be gone by the time you wake up. You know? You gotta use poopery. Look, how much stuff in that cabinet? Go to the open the cabinet there, Ray. Yeah. How much stuff in that cabinet is yours? And this is this is my kids' cabinet. Oh, I this, this is my wife filled this one up with stuff. Yeah. I didn't put anything in here. Is there anything in there you use? No. So really, the bathroom isn't your place. It's, That's it, right. It's There's a, nothing in here anyone uses except her. Yeah, it's kind of like when you're there, you're a guest. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. None of these things have anything to do with me. Right. Yeah. 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 And up here we have all kinds of smelly soapies and lotions. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, those. And things. this holds lotions and soapies, lotions, candles. Yeah. Gee, are they afraid of smelling bad? Is that what it's all about? I guess I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But then they hold their farts back, and then when they let them go, it's just oh, it's, horror. It's, it's horror. horror. <laughs> it's horrendous. <laughs> you know what I love about my wife? I, and she's going to hate me for saying this. She has, ah, she has a tendency to fart. Okay? Oh, Jesus. Um, yeah. She has a tendency to fart. Uh, and, I, I, you know, at her age, uh, why not? And I have a tendency oh. to do it as well. But the thing is that I will be sitting there and all of a sudden, and she always has this spray around in case she does. And I will, I will suddenly smell this thing and I'll say, did you fart? And then she, <laughs> she admits it. But prior to that, she's not going to admit it or do anything about it. You know, and sometimes she denies it. Sometimes she denies it. And I said, well, I don't know how you can deny it because the rest of the world can smell it, you know. That's what it's like to have a marriage when you're older. What is this? Look at this. Fart fights. This is the, Look at this. This, yeah. is the, this is the other bathroom? Perfumes. Yeah. Perfumes. Yeah. Lotions. See? None of that. Skin stuff. None of that is yours. Moose. Hair things. This is the advertising and commercial reality we live in. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. People yeah. wonder All kinds of cancer. Yeah. Smelly things. Smelly yeah. lotions. Uh, lotions yeah and let's see what i got i got weed let's see i got a bag of weed yeah yeah um hey man, let me just uh, let's see stuff i, I got know. i got condoms that never get used anymore <laughs> yeah let's yeah. see got <laughs> oh god i'm gonna get in trouble okay <laughs> i gotta stop this Okay, we we, uh, we got to stop that. And it's, uh, we also uh, it, it's uh, I got to put on the theme here, uh, so, so Jack can get on. Weed and condoms. That's it. Weed and condoms. Yep, that's, that's <laughs> what a way, Breakfast of champions. What a way to finish the show. Hey, listen. Uh, thank you, Ray, for the tour. You bet. <laughs> thank Anytime. you, Kevin, for being here. Jeff, terrific. Uh, Charlie Wallace, always wonderful to have you. And Bree. Glad to have you back in the United States where you can watch all the horrible television and the, uh, the <laughs> violence and all of that. Uh, once they asked Lawrence Welk what he thought of violence on TV, and he said, I think they should be, and so should the saxophones and the trumpets. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, everybody, uh, why don't you do this? Give a big wave goodbye to the folks out there, and I'll wave back at you, okay? While I fade to me. Okay, there goes our uh, citizen panel for tonight. Uh, thanks to all of them. That was really nice. Uh, uh, a, a smaller than usual group, but uh, a hearty uh, group as well. Anyway, good having them here. And good having you here this evening. Jack Bishop is next. He's here uh, with a program called The Intersection. That will go on until uh, 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time. Uh, there's no Damien this week or for the next two weeks. Uh, he's taking some time off. 
And so we will then uh, be back here again uh, tomorrow night, as we always like to say. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>